You have high hopes for me if you think that I'm going to be able to wrap my head around it because Barbara Burkhardt here, assistant manager at Swiss Pastries and Chocolatier, has been doing it for many, many years. Good morning. Good morning. So we were asking the hosts uh, just a few minutes ago if they knew why you keep the chocolate room so cold. And there is a reason that my hands need to stay as freezing as they are. <laughs> Yes, there is a reason. You can handle the chocolate much, much better. Right. If it is cold, the chocolate itself likes to be cold. And in our particular case, we do have bread. And bread creates flour, and we want to make sure that we have the flour dust out of the chocolate room. It's true. Yeah. If you stay inside Swiss Pastries here at Startop Road long enough, you will leave with a, a, a small film of flour covering your body. Now, is it true that chocolate also takes on the uh, taste of whatever is being baked around it? Yes, it tends to uh, be quite sensible to that. Mm -hmm. And we do have a kitchen production a little bit, so it would take on a little bit of the bacon flavor or whatever yes. else Kevin cooks. The delicious and scent of jalapeno bacon yes. fills, yeah. The, uh, yeah. fills the building. Yeah. Okay, so now the chocolate that I have in my hand here is how it comes to you, correct? Yes. Yeah. What kind of chocolate is this? In, in our particular case, we use the link chocolate. Mm -hmm. In your particular case here, you have the white chocolate and you have the dark chocolate, and in here we have the most common used milk chocolate. Mm -hmm. So do we need to add some more of the milk chocolate? To yes, we certainly can do that. Okay, should I stir? Yeah. We do now what we call tempering the chocolate. Mm -hmm. We usually start out with melting the chocolate down, then it needs to be warmed up to about 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. It needs to be cooled down again to about 27 degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. and then warmed up depending to the start type of chocolate between 30 and 32 degrees. And that is an explanation of the process of tempering, yes. right? Why is it yeah. important to do that with the chocolate? You have to make sure that you melt all the solids and that the cocoa butter crystals are completely, completely melted. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you have the chocolate at the right temperature for the cocoa butter being fat not to rise to the top. Okay, sometimes so you if you separate. have, yeah. Sometimes if you have chocolate, you see that gray sort of film mm -hmm. that usually means that the cocoa butter has risen to the top. Uh-oh. And it's not ruined, you can melt it again, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, the chocolate doesn't have that really nice snap. Uh, okay, yeah. and now it's important that the chocolate is prepared properly mm -hmm. as well to get that nice shiny luster on the bunnies as well, eh? Yeah, to a certain extent. Usually chocolate, if it's tempered properly, it takes on whatever you pour it on or you brush it on. Mm -hmm. In our case, the molds are nice and shiny on the inside. So they usually take on that shine. If you have fingerprints in here mm -hmm. or uh, cracks or cuts or whatnot, that would take it on as well. So now why are some of the molds plastic and some of the metal? Uh, the metal ones are the old antique ones. And the plastic ones, this particular case, is the Germans and the Swiss tend to like to work with those molds. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a little bit easier to work with. They're obviously much, much cheaper. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, a metal mold is great to work with, but you have to be really, really careful that the chocolate is tempered properly and that you have high quality chocolate. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, good luck in getting them out. And oh, they get stuck in there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, horrendous. and you can see how intricate the uh, bunnies actually are. Now, the most interesting thing is that those uh, detailings that we're looking at aren't painted on afterwards. It's a unique process, and I think mm -hmm. a little bit later in the show, yep. you're going to walk me through yes. it? Yes, okay, I will. I'll, I'll do yep. my best to be a, a good little apprentice oh, today. Oh, you'll do fine. You're, you're yep. a professor at Algonquin College, yes, right? Yes, I am. Okay. So, so I'm yeah. sure you've worked with worse than me. 